Is not Jesus the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the Word made flesh, the beginning and the end, the first, last, never changes? He is the Great I Am. Isn't Jesus, isn't Jesus the wisdom of God? And Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost came, that we would receive power. And so the first, we have to look at the very first things that happened when the Holy Spirit came. We can't necessarily look at our lives. Let's look at what the Holy Spirit did in the beginning. First thing he did is gave him another language. That's evidence of having the power of God. You can pray in a language of God. Hallelujah. And not only that, you can... You can get so full of the power that you barely have the power to stand. Because Brother Hagin used to say, when the, whole, the power of God comes, something's got to give. And it's going to be you or the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let the Holy Ghost come and do what he was supposed to do. And in the infilling, now see, they had been full of the Holy Spirit, praising and worshiping God and praying in other languages. And they were just so full of the Holy Ghost that everybody thought they're drunk. What was the last time you were so full of the Holy Ghost that somebody thought you were drunk? And it, and it really resembles, and the reason is because the description of a drunk person fit what was going on. These people were laughing and rejoicing, and they didn't care. They just lost all care and concern and worry. <laughs> they were ready to pick up the tab for everybody. Another round for everybody. Hallelujah. Let me just say, nobody can make another person get so full of the power of the Holy Ghost that they appear to be drunk. Nobody can make anybody. It's up to every individual as to how much they drink. I can't make anybody, I can't make anybody drink the new wine. You have to make a decision that you're a drinker. Apparently, this is God's way. It's not my way. It's not your way. It's God's way. He says, I got to get them so full of something else besides themselves. I know I'll get them full of my spirit. I'll get them full of the new wine and power. And they'll get beside themselves. And people will think that they're drunk. Let me just say, and God calls that power. <laughs> if, if man, remember, we said all of mankind wants more power. Always striving for more power. Amen? It's not enough that you could cook a turkey underground or a pig underground or, you know, they put, cook, you know, how they used to just, Put on. No, we want to, we want, can we do it faster? <laughs> Until we got microwaves. Could cook a hot dog in 60 seconds. We want more power. And God gave us the Holy Ghost that we would have more. But it's not on our terms, it's on His. So we have to yield to the Holy Ghost. We got to begin to pray in other tongues. We've got to be deliberate about these things. And he said that we would actually look like we've had too much to drink. And that's why they call the Holy Ghost the new wine. Amen. And so we know that Peter got up and he preached. It said right in verse 14, Peter stood up with the 11 and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Full of the Holy Ghost, he preached the first salvation message. And so, boy, I'm not telling you. 
People today couldn't go to Peter's church because they couldn't handle what he had to tell them. He blamed them all for crucifying Christ. His first message, it says, but you crucified the Lord and Savior. And they're like, what should we do to be saved? I'm telling you, in this day and hour, you would have a great exodus. <laughs> Nobody want to hear that. We just want to know if we can get a coupon for a free bagel with our coffee. <laughs> Does that show ticket come with popcorn? I'm going to get a free t-shirt. You're not going to talk about walking. I just want to come to church to see what God can do for me. God can't do anything unless you surrender to the power. Everybody wants the power, but they don't want to surrender to the power. And so, so Jesus, they, here's Peter stood up right after he got filled with the Holy Ghost. They're all acting drunk. And Peter thought, I've got to clarify this. <laughs> he stood up. And it said he stood up with the 11 because they all needed to hold each other up. They're like, Peter was not going to be able to stand by himself. We're going to have to hold him up. It said he stood, did it say he stood up with the 11? So he stood up to preach. And the 11 said, we got to hold him because he'll never finish this sermon if we don't all stand together and hold each other up. Right? So he reamed them out, man. He peeled them with the gospel. And then he replied. <laughs> he did, man. He peeled them. And they sat there. I am telling you. In today's church, well, you couldn't get a church filled if they're going to have to listen to the truth. <laughs> you whitewashed tombs. <laughs> no, you, let me say, everybody would be going to the bathroom about halfway through this sermon. In verse 36, he says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Now that we've done this, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent! Ooh. Churches don't even know what that is. Churches don't even talk about this. Repent's not a dirty word. But you can talk to preachers and they go, oh, we don't talk about repentance. We want to love people. You lion sack. <laughs> I'm sorry. You lion devil. You don't want to love people because you'd rather them die and go to hell than tell them they might need to repent. <coughs> Peter said, because he was full of power, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those two sentences people don't want to preach anymore. Repent for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Ghost. Three things people don't want to talk about anymore. Repentance. God forbid if somebody repents. Repentance, sin, and the Holy Ghost. And it says right here, the promise. What promise? Did we read what the promise is? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. This promise is a mystery. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. How much power is there? Remember, Jesus Christ Christ is not his last name. we got to remember that. You would think the way people flip it around, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the way they say it, and people curse it. Let me just say, Christ is not his last name. His name is Jesus, the Son of the living God. He is the Son of the living God. And he is the Christ, the anointed one. So he said he was going to make Christs out of all of us. How did he do it? It's a mystery. Christ, the same anointing that was in Jesus, Christ, that anointing is now in us. And what is it? Power. We got to emphasize what Jesus emphasized. It's power. Christians will be 
unhappy and unsatisfied and searching the world to get everything the world has to offer to make them happy and satisfied and never be satisfied because it's only by the Holy Ghost that a person can be satisfied. And you need another drink every day. How do I know? Because there's days that I don't drink and I am dry. Amen? Nothing like being in a dry house. <laughs> Nothing like being in a dry city. <laughs> Nothing like being in a dry county. <laughs> we don't want no dry county. We don't want no dry city. And I don't want no dry house. I want to be serving them up in my house. Amen? So that's what the power did. The power was on Peter to preach. The power of God will be on you to say exactly what needs to be said at the time it needs to be said to who it needs to be said and how you should say it. I, with every ounce of my being, I try to be as loving, as kind as I possibly can. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the personality. It has to do with the truth. It has to do, you can meet the nicest, sweetest people in the whole world, and they will lie, lie, lie. That ain't loving, and that ain't kind. Amen? So we can see what, 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 what the power, when we have the power, what it will do. And in chapter 3, now we're going to be talking about the Holy Ghost until the, until the Lord tells us to preach on, teach on, learn, be reminded of something else. But the next thing in chapter 3, it talks about, Peter healing the beggar. In chapter 3, verse 1, it says, One day Peter and John were going up. Now remember, they had the Holy Ghost and power. To the temple at the time of prayer, at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you power. There's no way that Peter and John could heal anybody before the Holy Ghost came on them. Taking him, to the right hand, uh, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the, uh, the man's feet and ankles became strong and he jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. He went from healed to dancing. <clears throat> he sat there and he, he was lame. He was no good from the waist down. And all of a sudden he was dancing before God and everybody else. And let me just say, that took power. Now, remember in the ministry of Jesus, and he told, he told the 12, he laid hands on them and told them to go out and, you know, pray for people to get healed. Let me just say, this was a miracle. This is a miracle. And then they came back, and people came back complaining, why couldn't they heal us? <laughs> why couldn't we get healed? But when the power of God came on them, they went around doing good and healing all. You know, a lot of times people talk about, you know, they, they give testimonies how they pray for somebody, they got healed. They prayed for somebody else and they got healed. But they don't really talk about the times when they pray for something and pray for somebody and no, nothing happened. That will happen with us. It never happened with Jesus. It didn't really happen with the disciples. But if we can have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, and not just, I'm just saying, an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying when you pray for somebody, they will get healed. Because God's not going to send you to somebody that's not ready to receive. He's not going to send you to somebody that doesn't want to be healed. I can't tell you how many times somebody's saying, you know, they were in a wheelchair and they wanted prayer and you go to pray for them and you're like, you don't really want to come out of this wheelchair, do you? I'm saying, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll get a spirit of boldness too. And you'll say, are you fine in the wheelchair? I mean, you know, if, if a person wants to be in a wheelchair for the rest of their life, let them be in a wheelchair for the rest of their life. We worked with the homeless people for years. And we've met a lot of homeless people that did not want to relocate. <laughs> 
I'm just saying. Why should we try to get them off the streets when that's where they were accustomed and they got mad at us because they thought we thought we were better because we lived in a house. It's location, location, location. So we have to take people where they're at. If somebody does not want to come, you say, oh, you, they didn't have the faith to pray for that person. They didn't have the faith to raise them up. And the Holy Ghost didn't tell me to pray for the person. And that's none of my business. Why? I have prayed for people that have gotten healed when the Holy Ghost said to pray for the person. And the person wanted to be healed. Did you know there's a lot of people that are fine with their sickness and disease? There are people that are fine with their sickness and disease and their infirmities. Or else how are they going to get attention? They found, they found the only way in their life to get the attention that they crave so badly. I'm not trying to bag on anybody. But if somebody wants to be sick, the Holy Ghost isn't going to tell you to go pray for that person because they will not be able to receive something. Now, that might not mean so you might be able to share the gospel with them. They might want to get born again. Amen? They might even get filled with the Holy Ghost. But if they don't want to get healed, there's not a lot you could do. So the problem that we do is the Holy Ghost, we just have this, we see something and we think, oh, they, we see their need. We can't be led by somebody's need. We have to be led always by the Holy Ghost. How many of you got people, you got family members, you got friends, work acquaintance that you know they really need God bad? They need God. They need healing. They need, they need so many things. But they have got to want an answer. Even if it's not God that they want, they just want an answer. They want some. But let me just say, sometimes they just need to hear something, and the Holy Ghost will tell you, just tell them this. Do they get healed? Do they get saved? Maybe not then. It's not for us to know. This is all Holy Ghost business. We're just agents of the power of the living God. And so we, we're not the Savior. Just because we walk in a room doesn't mean everybody wants to get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and healed and delivered of their naughtiness. <laughs> it's not a... There's people that are pretty naughty. <laughs> and they don't want to get, the word of God says they don't, if the word of God's plain and clear, it says people don't want God because they don't want to give up their sin. So who are we going to think we're going to walk up? Because people know, do you know people know, sinners know, that if they walk with God, they're going to have to give up their sin? You knew that. <laughs> we knew <laughs> that if I get close to God, <laughs> all this other stuff's going to be shining. <laughs> People don't want God because they don't want to give up their sin yet. But let me just say, just like you got sick of your sin and decided you wanted God, that can happen to other people. That's why we pray. That's why we pray for them, so they can see their need for God. See, doesn't that take the pressure off? I got the Holy Ghost, but that doesn't mean I can just pray for anybody to get born again, unless they want to be born again. Amen? I can't just pray for it. we gotta, we got to want the things of God. Amen? So, and you, we can't judge by looking at somebody and infirmities and things like that, that sometimes we struggle in our faith, we, we don't understand. Let me just say, I myself, there's times where I think, I don't understand, Lord. <laughs> it seems like this is taking a long time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're like, this seems like it's taking a really, really, really long time. I don't understand. Then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go back to square one. I'm going to pray in the spirit and ask the Lord to show me where I'm missing it or what, what, what's the information that I'm, you know, sometimes, you know, just, just recently. And I know what the word God says, but sometimes I have to go fresh and new to the Lord and say, God, just give me a word. And when he gives me that word, that's what I say. I don't like say a bunch of other stuff. I just say what God told me to say. And by, let me just say, it's because of this, 
because of Jesus and the price that he paid, that we can be set free and delivered of every single thing. There is no pain and suffering that we should bear. Amen. But, but we got to find out what is that thing, the missing link. And the Lord's, sometimes it's this attack of the devil against your, against your mind, the thoughts and, you know, negativity. And, you know, then you get, you know, things don't happen and you don't understand why. And then the devil comes with, you know, because, you know, you have to suffer or, or all, you know, all these different things. We all have to deal with those things when, when we have either ailments or financial things go on in our lives. And I just said, Lord, you know, just... Just speak to me. First, I was like, God, why am I just, I feel like I'm being tormented. The Lord's like, it's, the answer's in the word. That's what the Lord just said, the answer's in the word. The answer's in the word. I was like, okay. Okay, i got to stop this crazy train and just find out from you what the word is. And he said, what does it say in the word? And I'm like, thinking, okay, what word? And the first scripture that came, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So what do I say? By his stripes I'm healed? <laughs> no. That would be kind of lunatic. No, I, I say what God told me to say. And my God absolutely will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Then when I wake up in the morning and I still, it seems like naturally I'm in need, do I think, oh, it didn't work? No. I'm going to say this till it happens. I'm not quitting on God's word because it's the only truth I have. And my God, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And when it looks bad, what do I do? I say, and my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches, not mine, according to his riches in glory. So I think he's got plenty enough to take care of all of my needs. Amen. And how do you know? Because we got the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost will direct us into the Word for our lives, for helping others. Isn't it awesome that when the Holy Spirit came, He came with power, power to deliver, power to set free, power to give us joy. Amen? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Instead of mourning and ashes, we will have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Instead of sickness and disease, we can have the healing power of God. Let me just say, it doesn't matter how long. It's like, you know what? I'm going to start fresh and new today. I'm going to get a word from God, and I'm going to stand on that word. And, you know, it might be like, y'all seen that notebook I have that I've just wrote, wrote he, things I've, uh, Lord, show me about healing and healing scriptures. And, and, and so sometimes when I just get overwhelmed, I just take that book out, that notebook, and I just start reading all those different scriptures and all the things that God showed me about healing. And it just I just read that thing, and it just builds up my faith again. And I'm like, oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Reminding myself of the goodness of God. And let me just say, you know who that is? That's the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said the Holy Spirit would remind you of all the things that I said. And Jesus is the word made flesh. Amen. Thank God for the power. Say, I got the power. <laughs> Amen. Did you get something tonight? Now, let me just say, you're not going to get everything out of this message just by sitting here in the message. You got to meditate on these things. You got to get up tomorrow morning and say, you know, I want to know more about this power. If this power is in me, I want to let it free <laughs> and find out more. There's so much in here about the power. Jesus said you would have power. Amen. We've got power. We gotta let we gotta learn how to let that let that power flow freely. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You excited? You feel better than you did when you came in? You got answers you didn't have before? You got let me just say, you're gonna have to get dog mad at the devil. There's times I feel like the devil's just sitting on top of me, and I'm like, <laughs> God, poor me. And as long as I'm like that, nothing ever happens. I get sadder. I do. I get sadder because now I'm feeling sorry for me. I'm like, oh, the poor thing. <laughs> Until you realize, what the hell? The devil is trying to... Dance in my parade? 
And then you got to muster up the courage. You got to take courage. I'm taking some courage and I'm telling the devil where to go. Amen. And, and let me just say, he will continually try to smash you down. But when the, uh, when the Holy Spirit came, he came to give us power. To power to override everything that the devil has to say about us. Hallelujah. Say, I can do what God said I can do. And I am who God says I am. And I will have every promise of God. Every blessing is mine. In Jesus' name. Every dream that he's given me will come to pass. In Jesus' name. we got to just say what the word says. Amen. Let that power flow through us.